Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to explain about the bonding that's present within covalent molecules and how you draw Lewis diagrams which show that bonding and make it more visible. So first off, just a quick reminder of what a molecule actually is. So a molecule is a discrete group of atoms. So we know exactly how many atoms there are in a molecule. We know what type of atoms there are in a molecule. Those atoms are held together by covalent bonds. Um, so the bonding within a molecule, between the atoms in the molecule, is covalent bonding. The bonding between molecules, so from one molecule to the next molecule, is what's called intermolecular bonding. So the covalent bonding occurs between the non-metal atoms and it is a sharing of electrons. So those electrons are shared. The bonds in a covalent molecule, the covalent bonds in a molecule are very strong um, and very hard to break. So they're not going to break by ordinary actions. However, the intermolecular bonding, so this is the bonding that's holding one molecule to the next molecule, is relatively weak. And it's generally based on some sort of an attraction between the positive and negative ends of that molecule. So Lewis diagrams are a way to show how the bonding in a molecule actually works. Okay, and there are a specific set of rules that we use to draw Lewis diagrams. So they show how the atoms are connected to each other. Like, is there one pair of electrons shared between these two atoms? Is there two pairs of electrons? So does it make a single bond or a double bond? What exactly is going on? That's what our Lewis diagram shows us. Um, there will always be an exam question that requires you to draw Lewis diagrams. Um, or Lewis structures, or Lewis dot diagrams, or they're called a bunch of different things. Sometimes electron dot diagrams. All sorts of things. But now, you're always going to be asked to draw one in your exam. And when you know what you're doing, it's a pretty easy thing. So, how do you do this? Well, you need to start, first off, thinking about your molecule. And you think about the atoms and how many valence electrons there are in the outer shell. If, for example, an oxygen atom has six electrons in its outer shell, six valence electrons, it needs two more. So it has to make two bonds so that it can share two electrons. And the Lewis diagram ultimately shows us how to put it all together. There are some rules. Okay, and the rules work in this order. And these won't make much sense to you right now, but they will once I show you some examples. So... The first thing you have to do is you have to count and add up all of the valence electrons on all of the atoms in your molecule. Now the valence electrons, you can always figure out how many there are from your periodic table. And I'll show you that in just a moment. You then have to figure out which atom is the central atom in your molecule, and it's usually pretty easy to figure out. It is usually, if you've got, for example, H2O, there are two hydrogens, one oxygen, it's going to be the oxygen that's sitting in the middle. If you've got one phosphorus and three chlorines, it's going to be the phosphorus that's sitting in the middle. Sometimes it's not that obvious, so if you're not sure, it's going to be the atom that has the smallest number of valence electrons and therefore needs the greatest number of bonds on it. So you draw those together. Each bond represents a pair of atom, pair of electrons. Once you've drawn all the bonds on there, then you put the valence electrons on the outer atoms to make that up to eight electrons. You must have eight electrons around each atom. So the bond gives you two electrons, and then you have to put on enough other electrons on your outer atoms so that they come up to eight. If at that point you've got any leftover electrons, you put them on the central atom. If you are short of bonds or electrons around that central atom, then you need to make double or triple bonds to make up for it. Now this might sound really confusing, but let me show you some examples. We're going to do these three as examples. Water, ammonia, iodine and carbon dioxide. Hopefully by the time I've finished those, you might be able to see what to do. And I might do a fifth example, which is phosphorus trichloride, just so you can really see how it works. 
Okay, so if we start off with water. Okay, the formula for water is H2O. Everyone should know that by now, I hope. So then we need to figure out how many valence electrons we have in our water molecule. So each hydrogen atom has one electron, and there are two of them. The oxygen atom has a total of eight electrons. There are two in the first shell and six in the second shell. So there are six valence electrons, which means all up, we need a total of eight valence electrons shown in our Lewis diagram. So we're going to start off and we're going to draw that out. Oxygen in the middle, connected to two hydrogens. Now, each of those bonds, those straight lines between the oxygen and the hydrogen, represent a pair of electrons. There are two lines, that's two pairs of electrons, so that's four electrons. So I still have four more electrons to assign to my molecule. Now, hydrogen is one of the exceptions. Obviously, a hydrogen atom only has two electrons around it. Because it's in this bond already, there are two electrons in that bond. So the hydrogen atom does not need any extra electrons. So I have four extra electrons. I'm going to put them on my central oxygen atom. And there is my Lewis diagram for water. Okay, so another example would be ammonia, NH3. <coughs> so ammonia, the nitrogen, has seven electrons in total, two electrons in the first shell and five electrons in the second shell. There's also hydrogen, which has one electron in its outer shell, but there are three hydrogen atoms. So again, there are a total of eight valence electrons on this molecule. So I'm going to draw this out, just like the last one, with the nitrogen in the middle attached to the three hydrogens. Each of those bonds contains a pair of electrons. These are not division signs. There's a bond where I'm showing the pair of electrons. So there are six electrons shown in there at the moment. Therefore, there are two more to go. Now, each hydrogen, we can visualize these in this way. This is not something you should do in your exam, but it's useful to visualize. So you can see there that each hydrogen has access to two electrons, which is how many you should have in a hydrogen atom. Your nitrogen molecule needs the last two electrons on it, so then it has access to eight. So ultimately, your ammonia molecule, or the Lewis diagram for your ammonia molecule, should look like this. Okay, so you can see that pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom. Okay, a couple of other examples. Particularly, I want to look at carbon dioxide first off, because that's a little bit trickier. Okay, so when we think about carbon dioxide, we've got a carbon atom, which has four valence electrons. So it's got two in its first shell and four in its second shell. We've got oxygen, which has... There are two oxygen atoms, and each one has six electrons in its valence shell. Two in the first shell, six in the valence shell. So if we add all those together, we get 16 electrons that need to show up in our Lewis diagram. Now, from those 16 electrons, we're going to draw out that basic shape again. Carbon atom, oxygen atom, oxygen atom. Now, this time... What we're going to do, we've got right now two bonds, each with a pair of electrons. That is four electrons. So we have 12 electrons left to assign. We're going to put those electrons to fill up the valence shell for our outer atoms. Okay, now this is a Lewis diagram. If we just Draw some circles around things for a sec. Hopefully you can see that each oxygen atom has access to eight electrons, which is great. It's got a completed octet, and that's fantastic. 
but our carbon atom in the middle only has access to four electrons. Now we've used every single one of our valence electrons, all 16 of them are shown in this diagram, but the carbon doesn't have a full octet of electrons, so there's something wrong with our Lewis diagram. So actually what we need to do is we need to take away one lone pair of electrons from each molecule and turn them into a second bond, which gives us a second pair of electrons. So now, that's really ugly to try and see, but with those double bonds, now the oxygen has access to eight electrons and, both, and the carbon has access to eight electrons. So actually, the Lewis diagram for this molecule, I'll just clear this away so we can see, looks with the carbon in the middle, oxygens on the outside with double bonds and two lone pairs. So these pairs of electrons that are stuck out there, they're called lone pairs, on each outer oxygen atom. So that's how we actually draw our Lewis diagram for carbon dioxide. And it's tricky. Okay, so one more example that's not quite so tricky as that. I'm going to show you phosphorus trichloride, which follows those same rules again. Okay, so this time we're going to count up our Lewis, count up our valence electrons as normal. Phosphorus is right below nitrogen. It has five valence electrons in its outer shell. So it's got two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, five in the third shell. Chlorine has two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, seven in the third shell. So that's the valence electrons, as I seven. There are three of them. So if we add all that together, we have 26 valence electrons in this molecule. Now that might look slightly tricky, but actually it's not. We're going to do the same process. We're going to start with our phosphorus, put it in the middle, put our chlorines around the outside. Right? So there's three bonds there. Each bond is a pair of electrons, so that's six electrons. So we still have 20 valence electrons left to assign. So we're going to start off by putting them around the outer edges, around the outer atoms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then we're going to put the last two, 19, 20, on our central atom. Now hopefully you can see when you look at that, that actually each of the chlorines has six lone pairs, or six lone electrons, plus the shared pair, so they have eight. The phosphorus has the lone pair, plus three shared pairs, so it has access to eight. That is a completed Lewis diagram. Finally, extra for experts. This one is not an easy option. Okay. We're going to look at hydrogen cyanide. Now, this is tricky for a couple of reasons. So the first one, counting up the electrons, that's easy. So hydrogen has one valence electron, carbon has four valence electrons, and nitrogen has five valence electrons. So we've got a total of ten. The hardest part, actually, in this molecule is figuring out which one goes in the middle. And the answer to that is it's the one that needs the most electrons. It's got to be your carbon. So we're going to put nitrogen on one end, hydrogen on the other. Okay, so there's four electrons, so I've got six more to go. I'm going to start by putting them around the outside of that. Okay, so now I've got my ten electrons in there. My hydrogen's fine, my nitrogen's fine, my carbon's only got four electrons. So what I've got to do take away one lone pair, make a double bond. Okay, now my nitrogen's still fine, my hydrogen's still fine, now my carbon's got six electrons around it. Actually, that's going to need a triple bond. So now we have two electrons around our hydrogen, eight electrons around our carbon, and eight electrons around our nitrogen. So Lewis diagrams are a way of showing where the electrons are shared between atoms. In the next video I will show you how we can use that to then figure out the shape of the molecule. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for your attention and bye.